recorded live from the dungeon, this is the Dream Warrior Review, and I'm Kurt Thomas. And coming at you live from the hills of Tennessee, straight from his Tennessee Hyundai, I'm Mick Strong. Mick Strong. How are things going in Tennessee? Oh, it's it's actually, it's pretty good. I mean, I, I'm desperately trying to get into my actual studio. I'm just days away from getting it finished. Ah. Uh, and it has been... Still working qu- on that. I am still... Well, I painted. Now I'm down to... Oh, good. I have carpet coming in on Wednesday, and I have to get the molding up, and I have to get uh, two doors hung. Wow. Yeah, that's that's pretty good, though, you know? I missed my window of opportunity to get you to help me build a dungeon. Yes, you did. <laughs> I, I I want you to know that... Oh, well. I did... You know, we did, uh, it took six, we did 60 sheets of drywall. That's, that's how, that's how, that's how big it was. 60 sheets of drywall, and I painted it today in an hour and a half. Oh, wow. The whole, the whole thing. Oh, wow. <laughs> yeah. That's awesome. And, and, and I don't mean with a sprayer. I hand painted it in an hour and a half. With a tiny... Tiny toothbrush? Yeah. <laughs> well, that was a nine inch wide roller, but okay, with a toothbrush. <laughs> nine inches, wow. Yeah, I yeah, used my big nine inch record of the band that played the blues. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Tales, Tales from, from the Loop. Loop. I have to tell you, there's something amazing about Tales from the Loop, and I had, can't quite put my finger on it. Uh, what is it? I know what it is. This is the most upbeat, hilarious show that I will have ever seen, and it left me feeling giddy and so happy okay, that's not that it. I sang to that's myself <laughs> out loud. Oh, wait, wait. Yeah, I have the wrong review here. That's else. for something else. <laughs> no, this one, uh, I have to tell you that, first of all, can I just say that it seems that quite a few of them are pretty dark? Hello? Uh, so yeah. yeah. Ex- the <laughs> Basically opposite. the opposite of what I just and, said. And <laughs> <laughs> I, it was like melancholy. Not, I wrote down, it made me overwhelming feeling of melancholy and sadness. Yeah, and it's probably I was going to say, watch especially during, during the, the, pandemic, the pandemic, yes. But it, it's funny, but melancholia... Uh, when you said melancholy, I was like, oh, yeah, yeah. that was, you, you know, because it, it has this um, this timeless uh, kind of uh, odd color palette uh, that is very kind of American Gothic. Yes. And, and the thing is, is it, it, yeah, it, yeah, totally. it, it feels, uh, it feels. It, it, yeah, it, it it does. It feels like you're you're working like you're uh, inside of a painting. Yeah, there's something about it that just is. Well, this is, I wrote actually. I was thinking this. That one thought I had was that this feels like it's you're watching a painting. Yeah, happen that, if that makes any sense. De- develop slowly. That no, that's total. That that is totally, totally the feel of it. And it it and it's it it's funny because I the the stories. Are definitely a notch above as far as science fiction goes. Well, I only saw three to- three episodes, so I'm not that. I didn't get to get, get to all of them. Well, I think I, I I've seen four, and it's and classic. It's classic sci-fi, is what I'm thinking. Yeah, it is. It, it was to me. It was. Uh, it was like just uh, like the period of sci-fi, just after all the 50s and 60s. You know, uh, the Rod Serling. Uh, stuff yeah, yeah. it's sort of like advanced Rod Serling writing <laughs> exactly well yeah it's it, like Twilight Zone stuff yeah yeah exactly and it's uh, but at the same time there's something about it that uh, that has this uh, ethereal timeless quality um, but but also it there's something kind of unlikable about it <laughs> really <laughs> <laughs> so I don't think I like I disliked anything about this, um, other than I I didn't really feel like I had any closure <laughs> for any any of the episodes that I've seen. And but I thought this was character driven, and, and I like sci-fi stories that are character driven, which is probably why I like and story driven. 
story and character are big or big for a Spielberg, for example. So you know what I the 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 elements that I loved about it were that there it was the same characters all the way through. Right. Yeah. I, I mean, I it's therefore it didn't have the anthology feeling to it. However, it was anthology like in that all the stories were quite different. So kind of like American Horror Story or um, uh, what's the one that had the Castle Rock a little bit, but more likable than Castle Rock. <laughs> yeah, more likable than Castle Rock by a long shot. Yeah, absolutely. Ugh. No, see, I, I I was following the characters, so I, I kind of forgot it was sci-fi, and uh, <laughs> really it was yeah. more about characters and story for me. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but but like you said, it, it has a darkness to it, you know? Yes. Uh, it, it, it it's funny that every story had like a uh, a certain eh, I want to say slightly life and death kind of quality to it. Oh boy! <laughs> well, the second one I was well, like, oh. yeah, uh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> what just happened? <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, and and the third one had a had kind of like the uh, yeah, it had the same thing, but. But you know what? The thing is, is about the second one, is what was with the that walked up at the end? <laughs> you know? Oh, wait. That's a... Oh, is that the ultimate spoiler, right? No, Sorry. I'll do an ear. Oh, ear. <laughs> what was up with the, the ear that walked up? Ear. Yeah, well, that was, that, was pretty, that was pretty trippy, I have to say. Overall, I want to say that I liked it a lot better than I liked it. <laughs> I'm not sure what that means. We'll have to go back to uh, exactly. a different time to figure that out. Yeah, that's yeah. <laughs> I'll let you know when I get to the end of the story. <laughs> I loved it. I just don't know if there's a payoff or not. And if there isn't a payoff, I'm not sure if I'm going to be mad or not. I'm, either way, I'm going to feel depressed probably. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, there was just something. Uh, yeah, something about it, boy. But it it did have that feeling of. Uh, of science fiction when I was growing up, right? Yeah, know? yeah, it really did. Uh, well, it because, had that artificial intelligence feel to it, kind of, you know. Yeah, yeah, that like it was, you know, the good story that was written by the ten thousand monkeys. <laughs> <laughs> so, <laughs> I'm curious to know where this. So the I guess this was inspired by a bunch of paintings by an artist, and I, that's all I know about it. Is that it? Yeah, I think I, I think that it was. Uh, so that's interesting to me because that's kind of the we we talked about it being a painting. <laughs> that's yeah, kind of how I feel. It, it is. It is kind of funny, and 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 the thing is though, uh, to have to have aligned the production design so well with the paintings themselves. Because I I looked up some of the paintings too. Oh, I didn't, yeah, I just I it, just discovered that like <laughs> today. I was like, oh yeah. yeah. But 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 that the color palettes w- w- were so uh, matching was uh, quite interesting. You know. Huh. Well, I'm probably going to rate this higher because I like the actors, I like the story. Well, don't, I like the don't scenery, get me wrong. I, I I thought it was really well done, and 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 it. It, I, I did like it. I, I don't want to seem like I didn't like it. Um, I would. I'm I'm going to give it a uh, three point two. Whoa. Yeah, I know. See, I'm I'm at like a four point two. Ooh, really? Yeah, I thought this was great. Except for I was didn't think it was so great because I was depressed. <laughs> I'm not sure. I guess I don't know how I feel about it other than uh, I give it a 4.2, but I don't know why. Like I said, I really, I thought it, everything was great about it, actually. I didn't dislike anything other than I felt like there was no closing the loop, but I guess yeah, maybe that's the uh, point, uh, uh, is that there's uh, loops. You, 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 there was nothing that you didn't like other than the fact that you uh, wanted to sli- slice your wrist. When I was you stuck were done. in a loop, <laughs> <laughs> multiple loops. Huh. And I think that's the the point. That's I guess. A, where have I heard this before from you? Hmm. But I wonder if it ends. Yeah, right. <laughs> Does it wrap itself up at the last episode in a nice little bow, or is there going to be another season? I don't know. See. Yeah, good question. Well, you know what? We're just going to have to keep on going, 
and I, I, I will say I want to watch this. I didn't really want to watch season two of Castle Rock. Yeah, that that was pain. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. Right. See. <laughs> well, that's about all I got. That's all I got to say on this one. That's all I have to say too. Okay. That was easy. That was very easy. Thanks for joining us on the Dream Warrior Review Podcast. Don't forget to tell your friends about us, follow us, and, of course, like us. We can be found on Podbean, which is an amazing app, YouTube, Stitcher, Alexa on any pod, iTunes, Google Play. We're on Twitter as well, at DW Review, and, of course, Facebook. You can find us there. You can also email us at dreamwarriorreview at gmail.com. I was stuck in a loop. <laughs> Multiple loops. Huh. I think that's the, the point, that's a, I guess. Where have I heard this before from you?